Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin. And they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Bill Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Bill Harris. Early this morning, Frankie called Phil and told him he has tickets for the Clyde Beatty Circus and he's taking the entire family. As we look in on the Harrises are getting dressed. Alice is applying her makeup and Phil is combing his hair. Phil? <laughs> Phil, are you looking in your mirror? Yeah, why? Well, I'm looking in mine and you know, Phil, we're starting to get a little older. We've changed in the last eight years and, well... I'm not too happy with what I see in my mirror. Well, come over here and try mine. This one shows nothing but beauty. <laughs> oh, so you're happy with what you see, huh? Yeah, and you should be happy with what you see. Because, honey, you're prettier than ever. More beautiful even than when you were in pictures. Oh, Phil, do you really think so? I certainly do. You know, the added years have given you a matronly charm. <laughs> Why, you don't show your age any more than, uh, than, than Lillian Gish. <laughs> Lillian Gish? Phil, how old do you think I am? 31. You're a year younger than I am. I'm 32. <laughs> you're 32. <laughs> We're certainly living in a fast age. What do you mean? Today you're 32, and in only three short months, you'll be 44. <laughs> Let's not be catty, Thelma. <laughs> I'm only 36. A man of 44 wouldn't have my terrific belt. <laughs> Just get a load of this belt. All right, Tarzan. Put your shirt on and let's get ready. No, no kidding, honey. Look at these bulging biceps. Look at the oh, way these honey. pretty... Daddy, are you ready yet? Uncle Frankie will be here soon. And Girls, gonna... don't disturb your daddy. He's busy fascinating himself. <laughs> go to the circus. I want to see Clyde Beatty with his wild animals and the clowns and the strong man. Baby Alice, you don't have to go to no circus to see the strong man. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, if you want to see a display of brute strength, just feel this muscle in my arm. Go ahead, kid, feel it. Okay, Daddy. Gee whiz, your muscle is getting bigger. Now when I put my hand around your arm, my fingers barely touch. <laughs> Never mind, you have long fingers. <laughs> Phyllis, you have a smaller hand. You feel my arm. Go ahead, press on it. You mean like this? Ouch! Phyllis, you're bruising me. <laughs> Phil, we're all dressed and ready. Will you please put your shirt on? No, I ain't putting no shirt on until you people admit that I got a terrific physique. Now, I'm gonna flex my arms once more. <clears throat> Look at that. Oh, just look at that. Well, if it ain't the rage of Muscle Beach. <laughs> what are you posing for? Hey, Frankie, you're a man. You appreciate these things. Get a load of this physical development. Did you ever see a pair of strong, bronzed arms like these? Is that what they are? 
I thought they were a couple of soiled pipe cleaners. <laughs> right, now put your shirt on, Flabby, and let's get going. We'll be late for the circus. You know, Frankie, it must be costing you quite a bit to take all of us. Now, oh, forget it, Alice. Mm, but five tickets must be pretty expensive. How much did they cost you? Alice, please. <laughs> There's one thing I can't stand. It's a person who brags about how much he spends. So don't ask me how much it costs. All right. If I want to spend $100 for five tickets, that's my business. <laughs> Remley, five tickets didn't cost you no $100. Well, it might have been a little less. How much less? I got them for nothing. <laughs> but they're special seats and they're worth 20 bucks a piece. Now, come on, I got my car out front. Let's get started. To the circus. <laughs> Wait to get to the circus. Well, just be patient, honey. We'll be there soon. Hey, Rumley. Huh? Tell me something. How'd you manage to get these circus tickets for nothing? Well, if you must know, I'm a friend of the manager, and he gave them to me because I did something for him. <laughs> now, what could you do for him that would... Oh, cost... Daddy, look at that big billboard about the circus. What does it say? Oh, let's see. Oh, it says, this is the last day to see the biggest show on Earth with wild animals, funny clowns, our famous sideshow featuring the bearded woman... Jojo, the dog-faced boy, Fanny, the fat lady, Pete, the pinhead, and starring for today only, Phil Harris and Alice Page. <laughs> now, who give them permission to use... A... Remley. <laughs> Mr. Remley. You talking to me, Jojo? <laughs> you got the free ticket. You've got a lot of nerve telling them people that we'll appear in that circus. Oh, Curly, don't get excited. You don't have to appear in any sideshow. Are you sure? I'm positive. All you gotta do is let him shoot you out of a cannon. <laughs> You'll be billed as Flying Phil, the curly-headed buzz bomb. <laughs> all I'm supposed to do is let them shoot me out of a cannon? That's all. And it pays well. You get $10 down and two and a half cents a mile traveling expense. <laughs> you know something, my ought to... You can go far on a job like this. Remley, look, why don't you let them stuff you in that cannon? That job's right up your alley. What do you mean? You'll be paid for getting loaded. <laughs> to appear in the act, we're not going to the circus. Yeah, and you can turn the car around right now because... Oh, but Daddy, we want to go. It's the last day and we want to see the circus. Well, if you kids want to go, you can get shot out of the can. I'm not going to... No, the kids won't have to do that to see the circus. Well, thank goodness. Then we'll glue together and Bill as the Siamese twins. <laughs> Frankie, my family is not going to be in any side show. All right, Curly. Curly, I'm only kidding. You don't have to take part in the acts. All the manager wants you and Alice to do is make an appearance, take a bow. Never mind, just take us home. But, Daddy, there's the circus ground right over there. Can't we please go, Daddy, please? Well, if you kids want to see it so much, okay. Come on. <laughs> Come on, kids, I'll take you. Oh, thanks, Frankie. By the way, where's Phil? Oh, he's right across the midway there, watching that scientific exhibit. Oh, that should be interesting. I think I'll join him. Gee, it's nice to see Phil take an interest in something educational. All right, gents, step right up. Watch little Egypt go through her gyrations. She shivers, she shakes, she quivers, she quakes. Now, step up a little closer, Jane. Step up a little closer. Hold it, bud. Not that close. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> These scientific exhibitions, they just enthrall me. Gee, look at her shimmy. What marvelous muscle control. <laughs> Gee, this is the most amazing and... You watching something, Phil? ...and disgusting exhibition I've ever seen. <laughs> 
why are you watching her? This kid has talent. Look at the way she shakes. This is talent? <laughs> she looks like a Model T trying to get started on a cold morning. Now, come on, Father. Oh, Hurry up, done. you two. The show's about to start. What have you been doing? Oh, that... she drugged me away from Little Egypt. Curl. <laughs> <laughs> what a deplorable lack of taste. You want to go to a burlesque show sometime? Tell me, I can get past. Never mind. I was just... <laughs> hey, you know the girls love the circus. There's nothing like it for kids. All right, let's go in. Let's hurry. You got the tickets, Remley? Oh yeah, I got them right here in my inside pocket. They must be in my outside pocket. I guess they're in my back pocket. Have the kids ever seen a burlesque show? <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, you mean you haven't got the tickets? Oh, I'm sorry, Alice. I guess I lost them. Well, if we don't have any tickets, I guess we can't see the circus. Oh! <laughs> Uncle you promised to take us. All right, all right. Stop slobbering all over me. I promise to take you, and I will. I'll buy tickets, and I'll get the best. They're only $3 each. That'll be $15. Let's see. I got 8, 10, 11, 12. I got 13 cents. <laughs> Curly, can you lend me $14.87? <laughs> oh, you got all the 13 cents, huh? Mm -hmm. You think it's safe to carry that kind of money around? <laughs> Somebody might roll you for the whole wad, you know. <laughs> you can blow a lot of cabbage that way, you know. All right, don't be sarcastic. Have you got any money? Naturally not. When I thought I was being treated, all I got is some loose change. Let me see. All I got is $2. Now I'm going to have to disappoint the kids. No, no, you don't have to. With $2, we got enough for two $1 seats. That's right. Sure. Hey, Alice, Frank and me will go in and see the circus and come out and tell the kids all about it. <laughs> you come back here. I have a dollar in my purse. Give me that $2, Phil, and I'll buy three tickets, and I'll go in with the children. Uh-uh. So long, boys. Now you wait right there for us. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Alice. This is my treat. I ought to go in and... Oh, no. I had my heart set on going to the circus. Me too. You and your ticket. You always get a big idea. All right. <laughs> Standing here now. Must be some way that we... Hey, Curly. How did we used to get into the circus when we were kids? You mean, uh... <laughs> uh... Sneak in? Why not? Come on. Okay. Hey, this is going to be fun, huh? Sure. Hey, now, look, there must be some place around the side where we can crawl under the tent. That's it. Hey, look, how about over there where those lion cages are? Yeah. <laughs> it is more fun than paying your way in, huh? Yeah. Oh. We'll just crawl. <laughs> Curly, please, this is no time to sing. <laughs> It wasn't me, fresh guy. That's that lion in that cage over there. Oh. Ferocious looking beast, ain't he? Never mind him. Now look, there's a space under the tent right there. Let's get down on our hands and knees and then crawl under, but let's not make any noise. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> Quiet, Leo. One more peep out of you, and I'll send you back to MGM. <laughs> I don't know if we'll make it, Curly. Yeah, that's a tight squeeze. Well, we got our heads under now. Just keep trying. There was only somebody on the outside to give us a push. You mean like this, fellas? Ouch! Ow! Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> Julius, what's the idea hitting us so hard? Yeah. If you were standing on the other side, you would have beat our brains out. <laughs> well, you guys, I can do it from this side. <laughs> What are you doing out here, Sharpie? I'm working here so I can iron my way in to see the circus. And what are you two juvenile delinquents up to? We lost our tickets and we're trying to sneak in to see the circus. Hey, as long as you work here, kid, let us in, will you? Nothing to it. I wouldn't let you guys in. Julius, quiet. <laughs> Not so loud. Those circus guys play rough. Why, if they ever catch us sneaking in, they'll blacken our eyes, break our noses, fracture our legs, arms, and skulls, and if that's not enough... That's I'm... enough? Hey, <laughs> Wait! Hey, Grab him, Frankie. Put your hand over his mouth. Got him. Got him. 
Now what do we do with them? I don't know. We got to get rid of them, but how? <laughs> That's an excellent idea. <laughs> hey, Frankie. Remley. Huh? I think the lion is hungry. Curly, you mean? <laughs> Why not? Leo would love a Julius burger. <laughs> Curly, don't be cruel. You want to give the poor animal a spoiled stomach? <laughs> oh, well, let the lion just lick him a little anyway and see what happens. Huh? <laughs> You know, he could develop a taste for him, you know. What are you, a couple of wise guys or something? <laughs> Let go of me! Well, we weren't going to hurt you, Julius. We were only kidding you. What's kidding about trying to make an hors d'oeuvre out of me? <laughs> Look, Junior, are you going to help us sneak in, or do we have to throw you in that cage? All right, I'll help you sneak in. Can we crawl in under this flap? No, they got cops inside. They'll catch you. Wait a minute. I got a way to take care of you two. They told me to wheel that empty animal cage inside. You guys get in the cage and I'll wheel you in. Well, if there are cops inside, they're gonna see us. I got that figured out too. You guys wait here, I'll be right back. Hey, Curly, we shouldn't have let him go. He may be pulling a trick on us. What kind of a trick? He's only a kid and if he tries anything funny between the two of us, we ought to be able to lick him. Yeah. <laughs> now, Curly, I don't like the looks of this. Maybe we should forget about sneaking in. Ramley. What? If you want to get in to see this circus, you can't be wishy-washy. Yeah. Once you make up your mind to do something, do it. It's like everything else. There's them that does and them that don't, and them that says they will but won't. So if Satan tempts you, hold on tight, cause you can't do wrong doing right. There's them that shall and them that chant and them that wish they could but can't. But it's them that does that sees the light, cause you can't do wrong doing right. Look at that gal Delilah, she had them all in a spin. She clipped the mighty Samson, but she got caught when the house fell in. So you see, there's got to be just one road for you and me. Let old Satan know he lost the fight, cause you can't do wrong doing right. You gotta do right. Well, make me know it. Yes, you gotta do right. Yeah, keep a preaching. If you wanna see the light. Oh, tell me, brother. Cause you can't do wrong when you're doing right. There's them that's good and them that's mean and them that's somewhere in between. But it looks to me from what I've seen that you can't do wrong doing right. There's them that's meek and them that's bold. Now, don't ask me, but I've been told it's the meek that plays them harps of gold. Cause you can't do wrong doing right. Now, look at old Big Goliath bragging about it. Side, licking on little David, but he got his right between the eyes. And so you see, there's got to be just one road for you and me. Let old Satan know he lost the fight, cause you can't do wrong doing right. You mustn't do wrong. Well, that's right with me. No, you, you mustn't do wrong. That's philosophy. If you want to get along. Oh, I believe it now. Because you'll never get along if you're doing wrong. Now, they threw Daniel to the lions. The king had it done. He's the law. But it wasn't long till Daniel had all of them cats drinking milk out of straw. And so you see, there's got to be just one road for you and me. Let old Satan know he lost the fight. Because you can't do wrong doing right. No, you can't do wrong doing right. Because you can't do wrong when you're doing what is right. Keep on doing right. Hey, were you guys teasing that lion? <laughs> no. Then why was he screaming like he was in pain? That wasn't the lion I was singing. <laughs> Curly's the one who is in pain. <laughs> hey, Julius, how are you going to sneak us in? Here, put these things on. What the heck are they? A lion skin and a tiger skin. The clowns use them in their act. All you guys got to do is put them on, get in the cage, and I'll wheel you inside the tent. Well, go on, Mr. Harris. Put the tiger skin on. You expect me to get into that mangy-looking throw rug? <laughs> I wouldn't wear that skin if I was a tiger. Well, you, you can take them off as soon as you get inside. And let's do it, Curly. It'll get us in and it might be fun. All right. Okay, we'll put them on. Remley, you get in the tiger skin. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs>
What do you mean you don't want to? I want to be the lion. <laughs> Frankie, you can't be the lion. Why not? Because I'm going to be the lion. <laughs> now, let's get these skins on. Okay, but it ain't fair. You always get to be the best. Last month, when we sneaked into the rodeo, you were the cowboy and I had to be the Indian. <laughs> yeah, but how about the time before that? I let you be the cop and I was the robber. Yeah. How stupid can two grown men get? <laughs> Okay, Julius, we're in the skins. Good. Now get in the cage and I'll wheel you in. Well, come on, get in. All right, stop pushing, stop pushing. We're in. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what are you shutting that gate for? Quiet, you two. From now on, you're animals. Let's go, beasts. You guys wanted to get into the circus, and I'm going to see to it that you get right in the middle of it. <laughs> okay, Julius, this is far enough. We'll get out here. Julius, you can stop. <laughs> Curly, I don't like the looks of this. Why is he wheeling us up to that cage chute, and why did he pick up that whip? Okay, you two beasts, out you go, right into the chute. Get going! Ow! Hey. Ouch! Ouch, Julius, now cut that out. Ow. I said cut it out. Julius, do you hear me or don't you? Don't be ridiculous. There's no such thing as a talking lion. <laughs> <laughs> Julius, what are you doing to us? Where does this shoot lead to? You guys want to see Clyde Beatty's wild animal act, don't you? Yeah. Well, thanks to me, you're not only going to see it, you're going to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> this shoot takes you right into the big cage. Keep moving. Hey. Oh, no, Julius. Now, you can't do that to us. You can't throw us in with those lions. They'll eat us. So what? If I'd make a good hors d'oeuvre, you guys will make an excellent entree. <laughs> I'm going. Oh, Julius. Hey, Julius, if you don't... Hey, go on. Oh, we better, Curly, we better go on before he beats us to death. Come on. All right. Hey, come on. Must be an exit at the other end. Well, I hope you're right. <coughs> Remley. Huh? We're at the end of the chute. And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming through the chute and entering the big cage are the two most ferocious beasts in captivity, Beor the Lion and Roger the Tiger. Hey, they're applauding us. They think... Curly, stop bowing. <laughs> You're supposed to be a lion. Ooh, Remley, look at all these animals in here. Ladies and gentlemen, we call your attention to the steel arena where we present the greatest animal trainer of all time, the one and only Clyde Biddy. <laughs> All right, Leo. Get up on your stand. Up! Up! Up, I say! Take it easy, Clyde. <laughs> Stop waving that chair in my face. What are you clowns doing in here in those skins? Do you want to get yourselves killed? Don't say that. Just open that door and we'll make a break for us. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Don't make a false move, the animals will pounce on all of us. You keep those skins on, you might fool them. Now, jump up on those high stands. Go ahead, jump up. Jump up? I'm a hundred years old, man. <laughs> jump up. Remley, cradle your paws and give me a boost. Stop talking and let's climb up. Oh, Remley, the things that you get me into. <laughs> Look what's sitting next to me. A lioness. <laughs> oh, no. What's the matter now? She's making a play for me. <laughs> She's rubbing up against me. What should I do now? Uh... Don't offend her. Make a date with her. Take her to dinner. Lady. Lady, would you like to go to the Brown Derby? 
Madam, please stop pawing me. I'm a married man. Get your paw off of my knee. My wife and kids are watching. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Clyde Bailey will attempt his most astounding feat. He will make the tiger ride around the ring on the lion's back. <laughs> Picks a fine time to play piggyback. <laughs> All right, Leo, jump down here. Down, Leo, down. Curly, you're on. Go on, jump down. <laughs> That's a big drop. Hey, Clyde, you got a ladder? <laughs> jump. You too, Roger. Jump. Yep. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Now, look, you fellas, this is your chance to get out. Get on his back. And when you get to the chute, go through that door, but fast. All right, Remley, get on my back. Let's go. Yep. Okay, I'm on. Come on, Leo. Mush! Stop digging your claws into me. I hold Leo away! Oh, Daddy, you and Uncle Frankie missed the swell show. Yeah, they had a wonderful animal act. The lion was terrific. The what? The lion was terrific. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> Suppose the tiger was nothing, huh? You said it. It was the most stupid-looking tiger I ever saw. <laughs> I resent that. Remley, be quiet. Come on, Alice, let's get out of here. Hey, let's get the kids home, and I'll take you out for dinner. Curly, you can't take Alice to dinner. Why not? Don't you remember? You already have a date with... <laughs> Down, Leona, get in the car. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. I'm afraid I rather startled a customer the other day. She was telling me... You should just see how impressed my friends are when I tell them all about the careful tests and good treatment Rexall drug products get. Well, now, not every Rexall drug product gets what you call good treatment. Some of them get just the opposite. Why, you can't mean that. But I do. Some Rexall drug products get such rough treatment that Rexall scientists call it shock tests. Shock tests? Yes, ma'am, shock tests. You see, Rexall's men of science know that certain combinations of chemicals sometimes break down under extreme temperature changes. This could happen during shipment across the country to our stores or even in your home. So in Rexall laboratories, drug products of this type are exposed for long periods of time to alternating heat and cold. Shock tests. This makes sure that they'll stand up under any reasonable change in temperature. Shock tests. I must remember that. Well, ma'am, remember it as another example of uncompromising quality tests given to all of the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. That's why some 10,000 of us independent Rexall druggists are proud to put the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that ours are the only stores where you can get these products. And in every one of those stores, a family druggist will tell you, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Friends, this is Phil Harris again. You know, cancer is one of our most deadly enemies. But you can do something about it. First, know the facts. Cancer is curable in its early stages. Second, send a contribution to the American Cancer Society. They need funds to continue the fight that they're making in your very own town. Just write the word cancer on your envelope and send it to your local post office. Good night, everybody. Good night now. Good night. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> 